<clears throat> okay, well, hello everybody. Terry Miller, Integrated Presidential Business Leader, as you know, with Take Shape for Life, and I am so excited today. So probably for the next 45 minutes to an hour, I have some of our top leaders in Take Shape for Life sharing with you about sponsoring. And you know, if we're really gonna do this thing, really go out and get America healthy, we need more amazing health coaches like you on our team. And um, so what I did is I ran some reports to see who was the top sponsors in our group. And um, in the seven people that, uh, that I'm bringing on, they are sponsoring like crazy for themselves personally and for their entire organization. And so I thought that it, that would, you know what, if you're going to hear from somebody, you might as well hear right directly from, from the, the person that's doing, doing the do. So I'm, and with no further ado, I'm just going to go right on through it because we have an amazing lineup. So for the first person I would like to bring on is presidential um, director, Brad Miller. Are you with us, Brad? I am with you. I'm excited to be here. Excellent. Well, Brad, I know that you have some great stuff to share with them, so go right ahead. Yeah, I'm really excited um, about this and just this time of year and um, want to say congrats to everyone on making on the call today. Uh, my intro is actually going to be more short and sweet. Uh, a lot of the people who will be speaking today will be speaking on some powerhouse topic and just some logic that uh, I have to honestly say um, has taken time for me to develop in my head on how I approach my business and this level. Um, how to have fun with it, how to strategically awaken, aim with people, create that stay so that people move forward in this business. So um, one, congrats on being able to be on this call and having that high leverage thinking. What I want to talk to you as we kick off this call, and you're taking multiple uh, amounts of notes here, is I want to talk about a topic and uh, one that was actually branded a little bit uh, better than I actually could have worded before by Sherry Brown in her training this last weekend. And I want to talk to you guys all about tension. We either have it, uh, we have it no matter what, but what kind of tension do you have? Do you have intention or are you in tension? And I want to let that sink in with you for a second because uh, Take Shape for Life is about relationships. It's about awakening people and it takes time. And when we have, when we are intentional, those relationships and the action we do will breed the result that we want if we're taking aim and we have our stay in place being strategies, tactics, and action. So this being the time of year where we get a lot of our aim set up, you know, a lot of people wait at this level to think about what they're going to be doing in the new year and they don't start taking action on it right now. So for you and your team right now and your potential team that you don't even have yet, what kind of uh, approach are you taking to your business? Are you intention where you wait till you have a, a really big need and then you're working out of fear, out of necessity, out of scarcity? Or are you intentional digging steps every single day to create the business you want in structural tension? Because at this level, many of you guys have arrived here through your passion, through um, making connections with people, through knowing the system and being duplicatable. And that's because our system is very turnkey. It's very attractive to people. And what happens a lot of the time as we are growing our team is we start to take our focus off of what grows our business and those same little steps you did along the way to get where you are right now. So, um, you know, our business is so turnkey in how we create clients and how we create coaches. And I'm going to ask you, are you in tension or are you intentional with the relationships that you're cultivating and the process that you are on with that, knowing that it'll take time because the person that takes a standard approach to your business. And if you guys really think about it to develop an executive director leg, you know, even if it goes moderately uh, at a moderate pace, you're probably looking at a six to seven month investment in somebody awakening them, uh, you know, courting them, approaching them after layering them, getting them started hands on getting them going. And then usually two to three months, um, as they awaken their ability and get your ground, get their ground or anything, get those successes when you're with them uh, hand by hand. So is that the kind of mental pace you're taking in your business, taking the actions every single day that are going to help you arrive there? So um, what I basically is I just wanted to open up this call because at this time of year right now, we want to be, we want to have, or we want to be intentional as opposed to getting into the new year and being intention. Because if you start cultivating the relationships right now, um, taking aim with your partners and potential partners. A lot of gets, lots gets breeded out of the new year, super regionals, people seeing the course that can take place, 
um, people having a bigger vision. Most of you on this line, if you actually trace back your lineage, were probably born out of this time of year. This, you know, being the holiday seasons, getting integrated, getting plugged in at the beginning of the year. So um, that's basically, you're going to hear a lot of great tips on how to approach your business as you continue to stay focused on creating clients and creating help. And that's just the question I had for all of you guys and your mindset as we go into all these great topics. So that's what I wanted to leave you guys with. Well, Brad, thank you so much. And you know what? You what you just said is trace back your lineage to see when you got started. And you know what? My mind was quickly thinking about that, and I think that was a very valid point. And it does take um, uh, patience to develop, you know, relationships. So, Brad, thank you so much for your sharing, and um, that was great. So, uh, Mr. Doug Wood, you're up next. Hey guys, thank you so much. Uh, Terry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Maybe okay, somebody Doug, I'm going to mute everybody, and you'll need to unmute yourself again. Okay, that sounds a lot better. Thank you so much. Brad, that was right on. Thanks for sharing. And speaking of sharing, I'm actually going to share my screen because I want to show you guys just a few examples of what's taken place in the last couple of years. So bear with me here. All right, and you might have to go up into the under more and put fit to window if you can't see this exactly. But really, I want to talk um, about making the decision. You know, most of you on the line, I'm sure everybody on the line is ED and above or very close to it if you're not, but nobody accidentally goes executive director. It comes with making a decision that, you know, this is a great hobby. I've helped some friends and family out, but to go executive director, it, what Brad's talking about, you become intentional about creating what you want. And it really comes down to making a decision do I want to continue at the pace I'm at or am I ready to go and do something ahead? But what about making the decision to sponsor health coaches? You don't accidentally sponsor. People don't just, I mean, you might have one or two friends that saying, okay, tell me about this health coaching thing. I would like to know more. But you don't sponsor more than two coaches without making a decision. And that's really where I want to set this up. And I want to show you guys just a couple of examples of a couple of businesses that exactly two years ago at this time made a decision to start sponsoring. And that's what's going to really set this up. Since we don't exactly accidentally go executive director, here's a, here's a good look at a business. Uh, and you can see the middle number right there is frontline volume. You can see this person was a, was a, was a coach and hung out and had a great time being a coach until August came around and actually it looks like they probably went to convention. An awakening took place and said, I'm going to do this. And they made a decision to go executive director. And this would be, let's just say this is Coach A. And you can see what they did there. But let's look at Coach B. They, came, they became a coach roughly about the same time. They made a decision. And as you can see, went executive director within 30 days, okay? So again, they both reached executive director in the fall of 2012. But let's go back to Coach A here. I know this is a lot of numbers, but I want you guys to follow me here for a second. We're back to Coach A here. This coach in August made the decision to go executive director. Well, during the fall, during the key months of building towards the beginning of the year, September, October, and November, Coach A never sponsored. Well, they did. They, they, they had a, a friend or two reach out to them and say, hey, maybe tell me about this health coaching thing. And as you can see, one month they had a senior coach. Other than that, they just focused on supporting clients and becoming a great health coach, which is great. But I worked with this coach and they wanted more. However, during the key part of the year, they made the decision, actually before I say that, up until August, they made the decision to go executive director, but they never chose and made a decision to actually build a business that would pay them really forever and to begin to develop teams of health coaches. Well, let's look at what happened. You can see their volume of frontline volume stayed between 7,000 and actually peaked clear from the springtime, which is pretty typical of that time of year. Well, let's go back and look at Coach B now. Coach B went executive director the same time Coach A did. Look what happened with Coach B. During September, October, and November, during the key time of the year that we are just in the middle of right now, Coach B made a new decision. They made a decision to build a business, not just the executive director, not just support clients. They made a decision in working with these coaches. I know for a fact this coach sponsored five new health coaches in November and December. 
here's the tough part to see, guys. The fruit and what we do today, like Brad just said, it's a six to seven month process to invest in somebody to take them through that process. We're not going to see the fruits of your sponsoring today, but it does come down to making a decision. Do I want, what will my business look like in May? Look at what Coach B's business looks like in May of that following year. $62,000 in group volumes, six senior coach legs, and I didn't feel at liberty to show you the rank because rank really doesn't matter. If we're taking the consistent daily actions and we've made the decision to sponsor, nothing else matters. And you can, you can see what happens to volume there. Let's look at these business side by side. Coach A is currently in this business a senior coach. Yep, they fell backwards. Coach B is now a global. They both started at the exact same time. They both were an executive director at the same time. The difference is one made the decision to sponsor. The other one had some concepts, some fears. I don't know hows. I'm not sure if I'm a good coach, so I don't want to bring anyone else into this business until I have my systems in place. There's a lot of things holding this, this person up. So what I want to ask each one of you is, now, is, uh, well, excuse me here. It's time to make a new decision and that sponsoring really becomes a part of your culture that you're, uh, that you're creating. So I'm going to ask you this. When was the last time you sponsored more than two coaches in one month? If you haven't sponsored more than two coaches in one month, sponsoring probably isn't the most important thing to you or it's not a part of your culture right now. Remember this, we can no longer present program and then health coaching when the timing is right. We offer the trilogy. Take Shape for Life does not just stop with healthy body, right? Although it does start there, but we as Take Shape for Life are the complete package and if we're offering the trilogy, when the trilogy becomes part of your culture. If you've been to a lot of presentations lately or seen some Zooms, or maybe even um, the presentations at a convention by Dan and Dr. Ray, what? It's called a trilogy presentation. Why? Because we don't ever wanna leave someone with just, with just barely part of it. And, and thinking about this, my challenge to you and something that I'm gonna personally do is make the decision to be, have sponsoring become part of your culture and really, if you can sponsor five new coaches by December 31st, what will your business look like? Because remember, we're preparing, we're investing, we're preparing for the harvest right now, and it will blossom over the next six months. And, you know, we could go back to that slide of Coach A and Coach B, but I don't think we need to. And do you also know that if you sponsored five new health coaches by December 31st, most likely with our systems now, which what is going to be taught in the next 40 minutes you will, or your business coach, will assist you to helping them get the, the clients to senior coach and, and will help them get their cap. With that many new points, that's 10, at least additional 10 new points or more, you're going to probably be in Mexico or any coach that decides to start sponsoring today will be in Mexico uh, with us come March just by doing that. So I just wanted to share that a little bit with you guys. Well, great. Thank Doug Wood, Presidential Director. Thank you so much. That is so awesome. So, um, okay. So I love the chat window that's flying by here. People are like, oh my gosh, what a great visual. That is awesome. People love the real numbers. Okay. And uh, Don Chow, Global Director. Don, are you with us? I am, Terry. Thank you. Excellent. Don, well, let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's hear what you got to say. Well, first of all, wow, Doug. That was amazing. You totally set me up for what I was going to talk about. And that is, so what now? Um, we all heard what can happen when and if you decide to make that decision to go ahead and sponsor. And um, one of the things I just wanted to say is that all starts with where you're at right now and having a really clear um, picture of your current reality and being very intentional, as, as Brad was saying, and inspect what you expect. So if you guys make the decision to go all out and do this and um, shoot for what Doug just so beautifully laid out um, before us of what the power of this is, um, it really starts with layering and referrals. It really starts with um, how are you layering with your entire sphere of influence and that starts with pre-clients, pre-coaches, your current clients. Um, it is never too late. Um, so really be intentional with where you are now. 
and what you want to create. Sponsor Frontline as leaders, we all set the pace um, for our teams and really model and work hands-on um, in depth with those key players on your team that want to grow. Um, and one of the newer globals on this call, and it's just, you know, we're talking to mostly um, fully integrated um, business coaches here and some guests, but this is really where it starts. So if you want to set the pace, um, really look at uh, how you are layering with your people, layering with your clients, and it starts with that very first phone call. Use those tools. Um, one of the things I really talk to some of the the big thinkers on our team who are sponsoring like crazy and ask them what are their top tips and some of their takeaways. And you know, I, I'll talk, I kind of wrap my little section up with that at the end. Um, but it was awesome to hear how they're using the tools that we have and they are just taking action. So my question is how are you setting your month up and setting your week up for success? So are you identifying the people that you are going to be talking with on celebration day? Are you identifying who they are and making a plan to layer with them? And I just want to say that layering is not approaching. Um, and I know that that's going to be covered later in this call, but really layering is creating an authentic relationship with someone. You guys, it all starts with this authenticity. We don't acquire clients and coaches. We acquire relationships. We foster those relationships and we really listen with that heart and mind of the trilogy. And like Doug was saying, when we have this culture of the trilogy and where we're no longer just offering the program and seeing the business opportunity is separate, that's when magic happens. So um, what I do is I set my week up for success. I've got my identified client celebration day and I know going into that day who I'm layering with, who I'm going to be approaching and I have my week set up so that I have interviews already. I have time slots already ready. So I know that Yesterday was my celebration day. I had who I was going to be still layering with and building that authentic relationship. And I had key people that I knew had this heart and people were noticing. And you know, it's, it comes back to referrals too. people who are giving me referrals. I'm, I really want to have this heart of, you know, am I, am I all about what's in it for me? And do I want to have, you know, more and more referrals? And that's great. I want a culture that's rich in referrals, but I want that those referrals to be igniting the coaches, um, igniting these people that are really becoming fully integrated. So on my celebration day, I am actually making those approaches and setting up my interviews for later in the week. Um, and how do I layer? Layering is so authentic. It's all about creating that relationship. Um, layering is really listening and hearing, making those matches in the, need, in the needs in their life. So if I'm hearing someone talk about how their work is stressful, I'm keying in on that and I'm asking them more questions. I'm asking them more about them and asking them what they want and then making that match. Um, and really, because if we don't do that step, how can we really sponsor a coach if we don't know what they really want? Anyone ever had a new coach kind of come on board and not get off to a really great start and kind of wonder what to do there? It's probably because we haven't taken the time to really aim and ask those special questions and really key in on what's best for them and what they want most. Um, so that was one tip is just how do you set your week up? Um, are you layering and do you know what layering is and how to do it and where to do it? So layering is on Facebook, kind of being omnipresent in someone's life, really being present, really creating that relationship. Um, phone calls, in person, Facebook, Christmas cards, emails, um, all of those things include layering. And then as you've got people who are giving you referrals, it's really just a question, you know, would you like to coach them with me? You know, they're your friend and how amazing would it be if you could be right alongside them, helping them and, and cheering them on. And then you actually approach. Would you like to explore what that would look like? Let's set up a time. I've got time tomorrow between two and three. Would that work for you? And then you actually set that um, in motion. The other key thing that I heard from my big thinkers on my team that's amazing and something that I realized I started doing, um, I believe it was Tia Wood at, a, I think, a Go Global a couple years ago said, you know, really diversify. Look at the people in your sphere of influence, your pre-clients and your clients, and who's, who's amazing and has that wonderful heart, but who's also different than you and has strengths that could bring to your team. What do you envision for your team? And when I started doing that, really identifying and visualizing this diverse, wonderful 
wonderful group of people that um, I envisioned as my team, I started listening differently. I started layering more authentically and I started approaching more people, maybe people that I might have been too intimidated or had concepts in my head about. Um, so just that shift in thinking attracted a whole different sphere of people um, and people with awesome, awesome resources and talents um, and that they can really go into their spheres of influence and, and blossom. And so we're always growing and learning, but just visualize what you envision in your team, really be intentional about your layering um, and create a culture that's rich in referrals, but that's igniting coaches. Don Chow, wow, you said so much in like six minutes. That was impressive. And uh, so um, excellent. I cannot wait to see the notes from, from everybody. Okay, great. So next is uh, Presidential Director Susan LaBelle. Yes. Susan, are you with us? I am. Hi, Terry. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Terry, first of all, just for allowing me to share a tool that Shane and I have been utilizing in our organization and so I'm going to be talking today actually about tracking the process of um, developing health coaches and I think um, those of you that know me I'm very process oriented and I, I'd heard long ago there's kind of four things we do in take shape you know we uh, acquire and support clients we acquire and support coaches and I used to think acquiring coaches was honestly just one entity but as I started to break it down I realized there's actually a four-step process and Dawn, you set me up so incredibly well because one thing I heard from you is you're extremely intentional on those four steps throughout your week. And so I'm going to share my screen here. And I think Terry had sent it out to all of you guys, um, a pre-coach tracker that we're using. And the importance of this is this is a new skill set for, for many of us. I know it's FIBCs and above mostly on this call. So you guys are starting to really develop the skill set. But I'm going to talk today from the position of being a business coach working with a new coach, helping them develop what they need to do in order them, for them to create the desired outcome of developing and growing their team of health coaches. So being that it's a four-step process, um, step one, we know, is kind of identifying and qualifying. And weirdly, we've been using this sheet, and I thought that was really the easy step. And I'd say to people, well, you know, thinking that they already understand the trilogy. And as I've kind of taken a step back and worked with a newer health coach, and I maybe send this tracker to them, and I'm make your list. Here's 20 names of who they would love, uh, you know, in their business, you know, what kind of culture are they creating and what, you know, who, who have they identified and qualified. And when they send this back to me and they only have three or four names on this list, here's what I know. I know that step one of the process is identifying and qualifying. And if they have not developed that skill set yet, this is where I need to start with them as a business coach, is helping them understand the matches of the trilogy and helping them understand that there's more people out there than just that need the healthy body. And maybe talking about that with them, of who do they know that owns their own business? Who do they know that has success in other areas of their life? And help them develop their list. Help them uh, get that better at identifying and qualifying the attributes that they're looking for in their organization. So that's step one. So this is if you're working with someone on your team, you'd have them fill this list out. And if they're struggling there, that's, that's where you would work very hands on. I heard, you know, Don talk about working hands on with your team. So this would be, you know, step one. Step two is learning to approach those people on this list. So as we've worked with our team and some people can send me a list. In fact, they can send me three sheets of these and they'll have 60 names. Um, but in the approach box, I have them write a yes or a no, which means they got an answer. And if they can't write a yes or a no, what I'm finding is they actually haven't approached these people. They've just kind of been layering, but they haven't actually invited them to hear more. And so that's me as a business coach realizing, well, step two in the process is approaching, and that's an area they need help with. It's a skill set, maybe a competency that I need to maybe take the t five people on the list, walk through it with them, and then walk through what an approach might look like or assist them with an approach. So that's kind of step two. And sometimes that's the area, that's their hang up. That's the area they really need help with. Step three is when they're getting those yeses, they're setting up interviews. So I have them in that box put the date of the interview. And if they're setting up a lot of interviews, again, this is assisting us as uh, business coaches is where do they need more hands-on help or help with skills or help with concepts to kind of bust through what's going on. If they're setting up interviews and they're not getting a lot of yeses from those interviews, maybe they need some better skill sets with presenting. So there's some webinars out there. Maybe you need to do an interview for them with them 
to help translate some of your skill sets to help them have more success. Um, maybe they're not closing the loop at the end of the interviews and really inviting people to get started with them. So that's an area, if they're getting to that point, they're approaching a lot of people and they're just not seeing success in their interviews, then you wanna be assisting there. And then the one through five box, and you, we all know it can take more than sometimes five follow-ups, but that's just follow-up. So I have them, uh, this is a quick sheet and a quick glance at what they're doing in this area of coach acquisition. And you know, where are they layering? Are they following up by inviting them to the challenge, inviting them to the next training, um, you know, inviting them onto you know, a call or you know, setting up another coffee date? Um, the notes is just any like, extra information they might need to comment on of what's going on. But I like to see their follow-up because step four, so we have identify, qualify, Step two is approach, step three is interview or present, and step four is following up. We know that many people need extra layering beyond that, and that sometimes, believe it or not, is where some coaches are doing all the right steps. They're interviewing people, but they're really dropping the ball on following up with these people and staying you know, intentional in their world. And I guess being a process person, this is kind of how I've dissected it out, and I would say for those of you today on the call, really first evaluate yourself, you know, print a few of these out and can you walk through this process? And you're gonna probably be able to figure out where do you need maybe a little more support and then reach up to your mentorship team and say, hey, this is where I'm getting hung up. Can you help me through this? Um, but it's also gonna assist you in working with your organization so that you have better eyes onto where you can maybe assist better to help them move forward in this area if they desire to. Um, one more thing before I just kind of wrap this up here is, um, a lot of us will set a structural tension and where this kind of came to be is I get a lot of, you know, goal sheets from our, or from our team and they'll say, I'd love, you know, one coach will be their goal to develop one coach next month. And they might have one name written there. And you, you know, we know that you can't just, it's not like the shotgun approach. We want to make sure that we're, um, we're talking to enough people because what we can't control are our actions. We can't always control the outcome. So if their goal is to, to develop one coach, I help them understand that, they're probably going to need to do two to three interviews this month, which in order to have two to three interviews, you got to take a step back, which means you probably need to approach five people this month. So in their action steps, we come up with the five people they're going to approach that month in order to create the desired outcome that they want. So creating structural tension that is a little more specific, giving them really what they need in order to, you know, have the desired outcome that they want to create. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you guys um, today. It's kind of a very succinct way of almost looking at file folder four, but with a lot less paper that gets kind of right to the point and hopefully will assist you in working with your teams and also kind of identifying for yourself um, where you might need a little bit more help or skill sets. Terry? <laughs> Okay, Susan, thank you so much. I'm trying to be polite and, and um, have myself on mute. And oh my gosh, are you guys so impressed with these people? They are on task. And um, that's, they're on task because uh, one, they want to make sure they share the information with you, but they're on task in their business. And what Susan was really talking about is file folder four. That's, that's the tool. And uh, Dawn talked a lot about using the tools. I love Susan's, um, I have that and I have it in on top of my stack of the papers in my file folder form. So that is outstanding. Okay, great. So Susan, um, thank you so much. Next we have um, new, um, almost Team Global Director Vonda. Vonda, are you with us? Hey y'all. <laughs> hey Vonda. Can you hear me? I can. So, okay. um, the, and I just need to ha talk a little bit more so I can get you on my main screen. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Thank you so much for having me on here today. First of all, I'm Terry. Really appreciate it. It's such an honor and really humbled by it because I've been taking, I have about four pages of notes right now. Um, Terry, are you picking me up? Are you okay? I am. It's great. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how and when to invite a potential coach to an interview. Um, Terry has said for the last year, she's probably said it longer than a year, but we just picked up on it in the last year, leave nothing to chance. Okay, look at your business and go, I'm not gonna leave anything to chance. Um, Brad, Don also talked about being intentional. 
being focused about not only bringing on frontline health coaches, but also working in depth. Okay. And uh, Vonda, can you hold one second? Vonda, will you unmute your, um, your video? Because we're still on Susan. And we want to see your beautiful face. So unmute your video. It is unmuted. Let's okay. See. Huh. Uh, let's see here. Should we mute ourselves and then maybe come back in? There we go. There we go. Did that do the trick? No, just one second. Oh, yeah, Terry, you're not popping up either. Yeah. Okay, so just a second. Okay, so just uh, anyway, just keep going. Well, okay. Uh, so um, being intentional and focused about not only bringing on frontline health coaches, but also working in depth. Um, I want you to think about one or two frontline health coaches that you have who are great to work with. They love being a health coach, but being a business coach maybe is not on the radar. Maybe they're being held back by fear. Maybe they're intimidated. Um, those coaches are usually really good health coaches. Um, they're ordering the habits of health for their clients. They're getting them started off with the optimal kit. They're, you know, supporting them each week with the calls. I mean, they love being a health coach, but business coach maybe is not on the radar. Um, focus on the coaches you have a great relationship with and who are open to being assisted. You are, you're calling them. They're reaching out to you. Um, but don't wait for them to step up to the plate. And this is what I mean by that. Ian and I did this for about... I would say a year into our business. Um, we were a bit timid, didn't want to step on any toes as far as our, our frontline coaches. We were afraid that a coach would be offended. So we assumed that this coach was presenting the coaching opportunity. But when a coach is not bringing on any coaches or just a few here, uh, maybe a couple in like a year and a half, there is a really good chance they are not presenting the coaching opportunity much or maybe even ever. Um, we want to teach them how to be a business coach if that is what they want. But if they say, you know, I'd rather just be a health coach, and I know all of you can think about a couple of those on your team right now. Um, and I consider clients who are fully integrated but not our own clients, they're like that fruit hanging in the middle of the tree, okay? You can see the fruit and you can reach the fruit, but you may have to stay on your tippy toes to get to, those, to that fruit. The fruit is there, so by all means, Let's go after that fruit. Mm -hmm. So this is what I say to those coaches. I would love to assist you in identifying potential coach candidates from your clients. I've never had one coach balk at that. I'm not telling them that they need to do this. I'm telling them that I can assist them. I want to be autonomy supportive, but I also want to show them what's possible regarding being a business coach and how to grow their business if they want that. So this is what we've done. We are utilizing our private Facebook client support page more than ever. Um, the July Health Challenge, the Finit to Win It Health Challenge really opened up our eyes. Um, people long for community. You will find potential coaches on your page, but you also have to work your page. Do fun challenges, invest some money for drawings. I promise you'll be totally worth your investment. Draw people out to share their own non-scale victory, their weight loss, and daily, we have began to celebrate those small victories on our private um, client support page. Um, be a detective and look for those clients who are participating, who are positive. I mean, we're talking even if posting a lean green recipe that they've got approved from nutrition support, they could be a potential coach, okay? This is what I've done in the last month alone. I see a client post a before and after picture on our private support page, and they are connected to that, that frontline health coach that loves being a health coach, but maybe the business coach is not on their, their radar. So I send this client of theirs a private message telling them, hey, thank you for posting. What an inspiration their post was. We, of course, like Dawn said, we want to be genuine. We want to be authentic. We don't want to scare them. We want to have high emotional intelligence, but say, hey, have you ever wanted to know more about being a health coach? Or have you ever considered becoming a health coach yourself? I've reached out to four in the last three weeks that fall in this category, and when I messaged them, all four of them said yes. And I'm thinking at that point, no one has ever asked them, oh my goodness, but that's okay because you're asking them now. So you say, well, what do I do now? Oh, good glory, they said yes. 
So Zoom is your best friend, okay? Like my husband says, don't phone it in. Zoom it, okay? This is about building relationships. You will be able to see body language and hear things you cannot hear on a phone call. And remember, they do not know me. I don't know them. So I'm going to ask them if we can do a Zoom call within the next few days so I can hear their story. Um, when they say yes, so a lot of times you're on Facebook, you know, the private messaging, and you're kind of in dialogue. Immediately when they say yes, go ahead and set up that Zoom, that schedule that Zoom immediately. Don't go, you know, remember we're professionals, so don't wait three or four days to get back with them. You're, they're excited, obviously they've said yes, and you, they want to hear more, so I don't believe the dialogue. I, I go ahead and, and right then and there set up that Zoom link and set up a time. I then, after I do that, I send the income disclosure statement and I send Becca Tenter's 24 minute webinar on the rewards of coaching. That's an amazing webinar. Most people will have already listened to the webinar and looked at the income disclosure statement before I even Zoom with them. And the reason why I do that is depending on how the conversation goes, I may end up referring to the income disclosure statement, putting it on Zoom, sharing my screen. So I'm gonna end with this. We always want to include our own frontline health coach and invite them also to the Zoom call. But again, if this is being a business coach is not a priority with them, that's okay because you're building in depth. We want to be sensitive. We want to be respectful because our job is not to coach our coach's client. We are there to identify if this person is possibly a good coach candidate, and we always want to edify our health coach. And this will do two things. This could give your frontline coach more of a desire to learn about being a business coach and could help them to ED by having a senior coach on their team, or this new coach, two to three levels down, could be another ED in your line. But either way, you're building and growing your team in depth. Oh my gosh, that was, oh my gosh. You guys are nailing it in like the six minute time frame. This is amazing. Okay. Um, Becca Tincher, I'm going to uh, mute all one more time, just one second. So, Becca, you're up next, president, integrated presidential leader, uh, Becca Tincher. So, you're going to need to come off mute, and let's, let's do this thing. Thanks, Terry. And my goodness, what an honor to follow everyone who's spoken so far. Um, you guys are amazing, and it's a wonderful group to be aligned with. Um, I want to ask you guys, now, everyone's talking about coaches, right? The way that we view sponsoring coaches that's the, is that we want to sponsor senior coaches. I think everybody who's spoken would agree with me that we want to put people in the funnel, but our end goal is senior coaches, right? So I want everyone here to just think for five seconds about the busiest person you know, the very busiest person you can think of. It might be someone you currently work with in coaching, and it might be yourself, and it might be someone you just know that you'd like to work with. When I got started as a health coach, uh, our oldest was four. Our youngest was six months. Kevin worked a full-time job with tons of overtime. I was finishing up another home-based business. We were highly involved in church. I would consider myself reasonably busy. But when I think of the busiest person I know um, in our organization, this won't surprise any of you because you've heard her, but is Adam and Gina Eccles. They have seven kids. She owned her own business. Um, their life is crazy. The reason I bring this up at the beginning when talking about senior coaches is there are three things that Dr. A said to us that I have forever imprinted on my brain. And so when I think about helping people be senior coaches and building an organization, I want to create for them an experience that shows them that they can have fun, they can become competent, and that it's very simple. Now, fun comes from the posture that you do in your culture of the team that you build. So if you set that up from the beginning and you build that, the fun will come. The simplicity comes from using the system that everyone's been talking about. If you have a simple system to follow, then it leads to competency. And if they're competent, very quickly and become senior coaches, they quickly focus themselves on sponsoring, which leads to in-depth health coaches. But if you make it too complicated at the beginning, they won't do that. Now, real briefly, what we do as well is we want to aim with our coaches. And I know that you've probably seen Susan's amazing video on what this looks like, but you want to make sure what your coaches, that you know what your coaches want that you have a really good idea of what that's like. And I love to plug in what Lisa Castor likes to say, which is, okay, knowing I can help you accomplish that with this business, um, are you excited about taking the first step? So I wanna get their buy-in. I wanna know what they want and then I wanna get their buy-in. And then I let them know, we're gonna help you, I'm gonna help you find your first few clients in the next couple weeks and that's the very first thing that we're gonna do so that you can fall in love with health coaching. 
because I want it to be simple and I want it to sound fun. So then we start with focusing on who we want to share the program with over the next couple of weeks. We personally send our health coaches a welcome email. It used to be two pages, but because of operation simplification, it's a one page. And we attach the client health profile and I ask them to print off 10 copies of the client health profile. That's the only thing I believe outside of a share list and a telephone that a new health coach needs to get started. Okay, so they have the client profile and I let them know that my goal in the first few weeks is to help them find those first few clients. Now I say few, I'm thinking in my head at least five, um, but I also want them to feel like there's not any pressure, but that it's definitely going to be more than one. Um, the next thing I ask them to do is to create a share list. I know you guys are well versed in this, but what we teach is to create the share list in two categories. Number one are the people that they will need to layer over time that they have a heart for, but they don't have yet permission to speak into their lives. But the second list is the share with now. Those are all the people they can possibly think of that they've discussed health with. Again, if we've covered this in the interview, I would skip this part as I'm starting a new coach. But if you haven't yet, or you're working in depth, like Vonda talked about, one of the other things I like to cover with a new coach is how much time do you have to coach? I want to know if I'm working with a couple hours. Um, I'm hoping they don't have just one hour a week because I would talk to someone like that on the front end and find out where we could create time because that's not very much time. But if they have a couple hours a week, I want to talk about how they're going to spend that time. And once they have their share list, they're going to star their uh, top five people, obviously, from either the interview list that they've already gotten excited about or the share list they're creating. And then I want to make sure they know how to posture a three-way call. Because for some people, the three-way call is going to be super easy and natural, and they're going to set it up. And other people are going to be a little uncomfortable with what that looks like. So let's say you have someone that your new coach is someone who's had a weight loss story. So they might say something like, hey, Megan, I know we've been running together for years. And we've been working on our health goals and talking about it over and over. I don't know if you've noticed my progress, but I'm getting healthier each week. And I wanted to find out if you're interested in what I've been doing. Oh, you are? Great. Well, my health coach, Tia, would love to share, help me share with you a little bit more since she's more experienced. Um, I'm going to set up a three-way call. Does that work for you? So that's one way. The second shift, the ending is still the same, but it might be something like, hey, Megan, um, I know you've struggled with your, um, your health and your weight for a while. I found something that I think would really benefit you. Would you like to hear a little bit more about it? Great. My health coach, Tia, will help me, and I repeat the same thing. And the wording is not so essential, but what I like to finish it with is something like, does that sound good? Because I'm asking permission for them to get on the phone. I want to make sure, I'm confident though, so I guess I want to make sure that I share both pieces. I'm, I'm asking it in a way that I'm expecting a yes, but I'm also asking to make sure they know why they're getting on the phone and that they're excited to do that. Nothing is more uncomfortable as a business coach than getting on a phone call with someone that doesn't exactly know why they're on the phone or isn't prepared for that. And we rarely ever encounter it, but the posture up front is, would you like to find out if this is something that will work for you? And can I plug in my health coach who's got a little bit more experience? Um, the other thing we ask health coaches to do within their first couple days, again, if I know their schedule, I'm going to ask them in the next day or two, can you watch the 20 minute health coach, uh, new health coach orientation that we've created just because it's shorter and in line with operation simplification, we took out a lot of the items that were available to coaches to choose from at the beginning. I think that menu that was there for a while is excellent. But when I'm thinking about the first two weeks with the health coach, I want them to think only, only about sharing with clients. And so that 20 minute webinar basically talks to them about preparing their share list and getting on the call. So it's just reiterating what I'm already talking to them about. So I want them to do that. The next thing is I want them to set up the calls as close together as they can because the more we can do close, uh, calls back to back, the more we can get in quickly and help them become competent. And I let them know it's gonna be a blast. So my posture is this is gonna be fun. We wanna do it as quickly as possible and as much as possible so that you get more comfortable. And the last thing is we ask them to do something that takes just a little bit of time. And honestly, I wanna give credit to uh, Gina Eccles for this. She came up with this and I thought it was great. You know, 30 days of hope in Facebook are things that have been used to launch businesses. And I do think they're really important. But one thing that can happen is coaches can get distracted with them or not be prepared for the influx of clients that are coming in. And maybe 10 or 15 people are interested in what you have. And that coach is still learning the art of sharing program. I believe in my heart that for most people who have a decent sphere of influence, that they have the people to start to find their first five clients. So what we are generally recommending is I will say to that new coach, now there's one other thing outside of sharing that I would like you to do for the first two weeks of coaching. Because I'm posturing we're getting a senior coach in two weeks. I think we can do it sooner, 
And certainly if it takes them 30 days, I'm not going to be disappointed, but I'm posturing it's going to take the next week or two so that they're thinking about it from that framework. And here's what I ask them to do. I want you to spend 10 minutes on Facebook each day if you can find that time in your schedule. And again, we all know our coaches. There will be the ones that will not have a spare minute and there will be ones that have hours a week where they can do additional training. I'm going for the lowest common denominator and my lowest common denominator, and I'm saying this in love, is Gina Eccles. What I mean by that is Gina does not have very many spare minutes. So when I think about assisting coaches, I'm gonna go with what I think she can manage and everybody else can add things in if they want, or I will do that individually with them. Okay, so Facebook. The first five minutes, we ask them to friend request at least five to 10 new people every single day. We ask them to look through their contact list, their Christmas card list, their phone contacts, their share list, and make sure they're Facebook friends with all of those people. But do it in small chunks every day so you don't go to Facebook jail. Number two, for the second five minutes, we ask them to go in and to write on the walls of people that they don't normally see in their newsfeed. And a great way to do this is to go through their contact list on Facebook and do all the A's one day, and then all the B's, and then all the C's. And they're just making comments, authentic relationship building comments. And the reason is it brings them back into your newsfeed if they haven't been there for a while, so that when you're ready for your 30 days of uh, Hope Facebook launch, you can go from there. So in closing, um, I want to really encourage you to stay hip to hip with your new health coaches and do at least three to five phone calls with them to get them started. Um, posture that it's easy, that they're going to be finding a lot of people that are ready, but to be unattached to the outcome. We don't want coaches to get discouraged just because not everyone says yes. Um, and then please make sure to debrief. I honestly feel like when you go through the phone calls with a coach, you, you, they watch you, they do one with you, and then they do them themselves, that the debrief is where the transfer of competency takes place. That's where they become more competent and they need you a little bit less. Um, and then in closing, Terry, I think I could do one more minute maybe if it's okay. I know I'm going yes, a little please. longer than everybody else. Sorry. No, Bethany, you're good. Keep going. I had, good. A, I had a lot of information. I know I already talked fast. So what I wanted to give you a vision of is the three to five phone calls or as many as it takes to assist that new coach to getting three new clients at least is your most important activity with that new coach until they get there. So please focus on that. But what people often ask is, well, what do I do now after I have a senior coach? And number one is rinse and repeat because if they can get to senior coach, they can duplicate it and that's going to be fun for them because they've found five, they can find the next five. The second thing is, and um, again, you were asked to share our best tips, so I'm going to share what works the best for our organization, but I know some organizations here do it a little differently. We wait to welcome coaches into our Facebook coach support group until they're senior coach. And our thought process is, um, and I know some coaches have like a special group for senior coaches. We just wait because we feel like if they get in that group and they see celebrations going on, questions being asked, it just can become a distraction for them. And so when we welcome them as a senior coach, they have now started becoming competent as a health coach. And we congratulate them. Welcome to the group and your senior coach. So that's what we have been posturing. The next thing we do is we send them the simple systems webinar because that teaches them to make sure that their client support is succinct and that they are setting it up for a couple days a week, not supporting clients seven days a week, and just a couple other of those things that help them keep coaching fun and simple. Because now they've got the clients, so now when they watch the webinar, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, I did that with Becca when I was on the phone with her. I understand, I'm supposed to keep doing that. Um, we recommend they do a Facebook 30 Days of Hope because now they have a big audience and they have a lot of people who've been watching them. And then um, one other thing that we've done, again, this is just what's worked for us, is to put them on a weekly support call, uh, a mentorship call, once a week, no longer than 30 minutes, for a couple of weeks to get through everything else they might need help with. So when I talk to a new coach, it's, hey, Kelly, what questions do you have about the new clients you've been supporting? What are your goals for this week? Um, and then also I go through file folder five, that tracker there, and I just make sure I hit on some of the most important things. Do you know you have a newsletter? Do you understand your mentorship team? Uh, coaches who start with that information are gonna end up with client, uh, coaches who've been coaching for six months with no clients. But if you get them to senior coach and you teach them the simplicity of acquiring and supporting clients, then you can fill in the gaps at the end. So thank you guys. Sorry, I went a little bit long. Wow, Becca, that was outstanding. And you know what? Um, so one of the things I want to say to everybody on the line is there's been a few things that have been mentioned um, here, like Becca's uh, new coach orientation. That's going to be on the, the Facebook page for you all and the opportunity presentation and that. And also, um, Becca, we would just love your notes. 
right there on that page too. That, that would be awesome. Okay, great. So I want to thank everybody um, so much. And um, uh, coming here at the end um, and wrapping it up and put a pretty bow around it is uh, Global Director Patty Glick. Patty, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thanks, Terry. Wow. I have pages of notes here. What an honor it is to be on the Zoom this morning with so many awesome um, fully integrated business coaches and some of our guests and also some of our partners um, in leadership. So, you know, what I was going to speak on today was just kind of wrapping everything up. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about some of what we talked a lot about with Dr. Anderson at Sundance. And he talked a lot about stay. We visiting a little bit on our strategy, tactics, action, you and yours. So what I wanted to spend a couple minutes on today was just go through a couple of little tips here. Um, I think when we're looking at being a fully integrated business coach and looking at the fact that we have made the decision to uh, move our business forward, we're looking at you and yours. And the question is, what does that mean? And what that means, I think, from a business point is looking at your goals, but also recognizing as a leader that we're here to lead, inspire, guide, to awaken intrinsic motivation in someone and help them move forward at the pace that they choose to go. So when we're thinking about building a business, you know, we were training last night with, with our EDs and above, and we were talking about the path that Dr. Anderson has set from entry level coach to integrated presidential director. And that path is a set of stepping stones. The stepping stones in that path are the same for every person. I think what's different from coach to coach is how far up that path they choose to go and at what pace they choose to go at that. Our role as a leader is to be able to partner with them and take them along that path, but always showing them a little bit more because sometimes, as some of the other coaches mentioned today, is that sometimes people may, may not believe that they can do it. They may not see what's possible. They may have fear. They may have skills, actions, or concept that may be holding them back. So if we step back and we look at what is it that I want, what are my goals for my business, and who am I going to be able to partner with to assist them to achieve their goals, which also will help me. So for instance, let's say you're a fully integrated business coach, you're an executive director, and you have some senior coaches on your team, and you're thinking, wow, I'd really like to be a regional or national, and you've taken aim and you know why. The question is then, who is going to go into those slots for you? Something to think about. You may see Coach A and Coach B and Coach C, but the question is, what do they want? What are their goals? So as we're looking at taking aim, it's not a matter of just getting a coach and popping them up in there, but really is a matter of building a relationship, helping them to take aim right out of the gate, and finding out what it is that they do want, and then guiding them, supporting them. If their goal is to be an executive director, then you're right there to partner with them, and up they go right into that slot, also moving forward at their own pace. You know, we'll have coaches that, you know, will be an executive director within a month or two of coaching, and then we'll have others that'll take a year. So it really is about supporting them with where they are. So I think that that is a really important concept is that as we are developing the relationship um, to really look at what it is that someone wants so that we are partnering with them and moving them along at their pace, right? Going back to that, I wanted to just touch on, you know, really looking at our skills because as we are moving forward, when we talk about you and yours, we're talking about our skills to identify qualify, approach, to interview, to start up, to assist a senior coach, and to go beyond senior coach depending on what someone's goals are. Where are your skills with that? Where are your skills with teaching and supporting a business coach? And then for your business, your new business coach to be able to teach that. So looking along as we're moving into that leadership role to learn it for ourselves, to teach it to others, and then to help and support others so that they can teach it to, uh, to their team.
So um, along those lines, just going into a little more depth, um, you know, looking at leaving nothing to chance. And, and Terry, I know you say this all the time, but leaving nothing to chance and really being the leader of your team. So as we are in a, in a season where there are so many coaches coming in to our organizations and so many opportunities, looking at who that sponsoring coach is, what is their skill level at that identified qualifying approach, just as um, Susan was talking about. If they have the skill, then guide and support them as needed. But what if they don't? then those are the coaches that you'll want to partner with. But what about also their skill at assisting a new coach to senior coach? And what about their skill of going beyond? So being the leader of your team, really be in touch with who your folks are and being there to support and guide them with not only the skills, but the leadership skills and mindset, because that's what's going to really help that team to blossom. And, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun to see them. It's fun to see a new business coach blossom. It's fun when you can watch them to know that they helped someone else to be successful. Just like remember when your coaches were new and they had their first couple of clients and they were in fat burning and they were doing really great? Well, what about fat burning phase for a business coach? So that was that that I wanted to talk about. And in closing, what I wanted to leave you with was a quote um, from John Quincy Adams. And that quote is, if your actions inspire others to inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, and to become more than you are a leader. So think about where you are. Think about how much fun it is to help a client with healthy body. And think about it's tenfold to be able to help someone to be able to be a coach and to fulfill their dreams, to be a part of the community, and then to watch them pay it forward and help many, many coaches and many, many clients. So that's what I had for you for today. Wow, Patty, thank you so much. So I wanna just um, give a shout out to all of our trainers, Brad Miller, Doug Wood, Don Chow, Susan LaBelle, Vonda Livingston, Becca Tinter, and Patty Glick. And um, this recording will be available because if you were anything like me, you could not take notes fast enough. But I'm gonna pull it off recording and I'm gonna ask the, the trainers to stay on. And if anybody would like to ask some questions of them, will be available.